Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Bat Cup Extreme. This is the first standalone expansion to Bat Cup, and is designed by the same designers as the original game. This one is being published by Polar Bear, and is a 2-6 to six player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, and is a competitive game where the players are going to be racing around the track, Mario Kart style, throwing things, popping each other's tires, damaging each other's skateboards and bikes, and all kinds of other zany things things all in the, in the attempt so that they can be the first to cross the finish line and win the game. So in this video I'm going to take you through showing you some of the main features of the game and a sample round to give you a good idea how the game plays. As always if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel as it's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on my videos, also considering that bell, so you get notifications anytime I release new videos. I'm also going to have a link up in the top corner. If you just want to see a playthrough of this, I'll be playing through the first, middle, and end few rounds as well to show you how the game plays and progresses. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll show you what this one's all about. Each player is going to pick an extreme racer that they want to play as during the game. At the beginning of the game, the players are going to get to customize their extreme racer by buying tires for it, which they'll have two different options. They can go with soft tires, which are going to help them around curves, but are more fragile as each spot only has one tire, and you're always going to have four tires equipped. Or you can go with hard tires, which are a little bit more expensive, but they're more durable, giving you two tires in each spot, so you're more resilient, but they're not going to help you around curves. Then the players are also going to be able to purchase brake cubes, which will help them brake around those curves if they're going too fast and the G-forces are too strong. And they can also purchase boost cubes, which are going to help give them that little bit of extra boost when they need it the most. Other than that, the players are also going to be playing cards from their deck, and each player is going to draw three cards at the beginning of each round and choose one to play. These cards are going to tell the player how many spaces they can move, and again, this is going to be based on the number of tires that player currently has. So as players pop other players' tires throughout the game, it's going to slow those players down, being able to move less and less. And then players are also going to have an attack side where they're going to be able to choose one of the different attacks that they can perform during their turn, and they can do this at any point in time, even between moving and that. And then players are also going to have defensive cards, which are going to give them shields to help them defend against other players trying to do damage or pop their tires. Each player's card is also going to have a curve rating, which depending upon the weather conditions will affect how treacherous those curves are and how the players are going to be able to approach those. Players are also going to move around their feet at the beginning of the game to pull off maneuvers on ramps and rails and that. And depending upon which color rail or ramp it is, you're going to have to have your foot in that position or you're going to fall. So at the beginning of each round, they'll be able to move their foot to one of the three positions as long as it has not been slimed where players are going to be able to do that throughout the game to mess up other players and potentially drag them down and make them fall. Now, at the beginning of each round, players will be able to clear one slime, or they can also spend an action to clear all the rest of the slime off of their board if they have been totally slimed. The board is also going to provide players with a number of different obstacles and opportunities. Now, these boards are also compatible with the original Bad Cup as well. You just simply won't place the additional tiles, as you're going to see in a minute. So each board is going to have a starting location and then the track will proceed with the players working their way around. And you're going to notice these spots here. For Bat Cup Extreme, you're going to be placing tiles and these are going to be randomly dealt out at the beginning of the game. And these are going to range from ramps to rails and even flat ground where the players are going to have to match up their feet in the proper positions based on the color of the ramp or rail or flat ground that they're entering. There's also going to be big tiles where the players are going to be doing the same thing, having to line those up. And it's just going to be based on whatever the players play at the beginning of the game. And then throughout the game, the players are going to be able to play some of their action cards that'll have the spray on them, which will allow them to change the color either before entering it or upon exiting, trying to trip up the other players. Another big feature of the game is the weather, and this is going to impact curves as players go around them, as each curve is going to have a G-Force rating, and that is going to be based on the weather. So at the beginning of the game, and then each time a, the lead player re makes it to a repair location, that are, they're going to change the weather. In order to do this, they're going to go ahead and shuffle up the weather cards and reveal a new weather condition. 
if it's a it's if it's a different weather condition than one that's already out there then the player is going to replace the token on that weather and then remove all of the tokens and all of the different curves and shuffle up and place out the new tokens again each one of these is going to have a curve rating and then i will show you how that's going to work so let's go ahead and say that we were going with the green player and he's coming around this curve here so the first time he enters a point on the curve and let's say that he played let's go with this one here so he played this card here and this has a rating of six coming around the curve and that's curve rating is six now due to the weather so if his rating was higher he would have to either spend some break to slow down or he's going to trip up and fall because his g-force is too high going around that curve this is also where players that have the different tires are going to come into play a player with soft tires actually has one point lower rating on their card when playing it so that'll help them so let's go ahead and say instead that we had played a card with a rating of seven where this player had soft tires that would actually be a six coming around these curves which would help him tremendously saving him from using brakes and whatnot there's also a number of other features on the maps that you'll find, such as oil slicks and slime and all kinds of other things that players are going to have to avoid throughout the game. And the last thing I want to show you is a couple of sample rounds. Now again, all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are going to look a lot better in the final production copy. So with that being said, each player is going to start off by drawing three cards at the beginning of their turn, and they will choose one of those cards that they want to play. So let's say I'll do this one with my player and then the other two will be discarded. And for my goblin player, he is going to, whoop, too many. Let's do, let's do this one here. From there, then our players are also going to make sure that their feet are in the right position and we are coming around a rail. So we're going to switch our feet over to our red sides. All right, then it'll go with the player that is in first place or in the lead, which is going to be the one that is farthest down on the track, which is going to be yellow. So yellow will flip over her card first, and she has a six, and her, all of her tires are good, so she's going to be able to move six spaces. So first off, she's going to go ahead and start by punching that goblin and doing some damage to the side of his ability so he's going to place a damage token there and then she's going to gain a crystal for that and then she's going to get to move six spaces so she's going to move one two and then she wants to avoid this so she doesn't slide out so it's going to cost her two points to move there for four five and six so she's going to enter into the rail and she does have her foot in the right position so she's good there from there then it'll move over to the goblin to go and he revealed a five so he's not moving quite as far but he is going to also be able to throw some stones, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. And then he's going to chuck that stone and pop one of her tires. So he's in her back corner. So that tire will be popped and she's going to have to repair that now. So she's going to be going slower from this point on. From there, then our players again will draw three new cards. So let's do one more round of this and I'm going to do, I'm going to play this one here. And then with the goblin, he is going to, he'll play that one. So back over to yellow to go. So she is going to reveal, she moves six spaces. So she is going to go ahead and move one. And then she's going to go ahead and use her spray right away to change out and she's going to go with green then she's going to keep moving so two three four and she's entering that curve and she's only got five movement now but she does meet the requirements for that and she's going to finish off moving there so one two three four five yep because she has one less tire now so she's going to have to move one less space Okay, then it is back over to the goblin to go, and he is going to reveal he's only going to go four spaces. He's moving a little slower this time, and he's got a transfer of six. So 
Unfortunately, he's in the wrong lane to pull that off at this point, so he's going to have to use the spray to convert this back to red, otherwise he would fall over. So he could have been able to take the lead if she wouldn't have sprayed that lane to have him have to change it. So that's one, two, three, and four. So he's coming up on her fast. And this is going to continue going with the players racing around the track, trying to blow each other up and do all kinds of damage, popping tires and all that. And it's going to keep going until one of the players crosses the finish line, or if all of the other players have all four of their po tires popped, disqualifying them from the race. And the one player is left, and that player will be the winner as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.